our first look at Premium Pack 2025. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more of this content. You know, I, I was hoping that we would get OTS 2025 leaks, uh, or, or uh, Premium Pack leaks, a little bit later, but, you know, I, I guess we're just dropping it here. So, uh, this will be uh, released at Jump Festa later this year, typically, and then it'll hit stores. Uh, boxes are, what, 25 30 It's like $20 a box. Um, and, of course, uh, we get to speculate, because this is one of our favorite things to do. I also do see that the potato is getting the reprint out here. Uh, which is nice. Uh, it is also confirmation that, of course, Crowley or Alistair and um, our dear friend uh, will be receiving alt arts out here. And I can tell you just how excited you all are to be getting the chance to get alt arts of that. And then um, we have some interesting little things here. This looks like Hope Woven number 37, and this looks like Hope Harbinger here on the side. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second um, for how that lore actually kind of interacts out here. But so you're basically confirming two alt arts out here. We already do know the 12 promo cards that'll be out here. And yes, uh, that does mean the mini Underworld Goddess reprint as you expected. Um, I don't, I, I can't help but not feel as excited about this product as I should be because, like, while the Magister's Lore is absolutely a banger, like, we love the ever living crap out of it. We're happy that it's here. It's just these two alt arts, I, I just, I can't be excited for them unless they're getting some level of game breakingly broken support in here to warrant us getting these because these are going to be ported over in the TCG as selling points in future sets. So, you know, that's going to be something you're going to have to be thinking about out here is you're going to be able to pull these in higher rarities. Uh-oh. So, what in the world is this guy right here? Because it's a little chibi guy, right? Looks like something could be out of Vice's lore. Well, so this thing's name is Wonko, the Noble Knight of the Forest. I, I actually kid you not, by the way. This is a Noble Knight. Ah, I've loved the fact that we get the chance to see these things. It's also coming in at a whole whopping level four. All right, what, what is this thing's type? Do we, do we, no, we don't even have a type for this thing. This is from 5D's 36 in the manga, which is kind of crazy. But when a spell card, or excuse me, when a field spell is in play, no monster other than this card may be attacked. The attack of a monster that destroys this card by battle will fall by 500. This card is awful. But we do know that Konami likes to power up these archetypal cards and see what more they can actually try to give to them. I, I got to give them a little bit of credit with that. You know, they, they do pretty good jobs with this. Now, back to our image over here. You're probably going to notice this guy down here, right? Um, I believe this is the one I'm referencing here. Uh, it's going to be our dear old friend, Motor Kaiser. Now, they have been doing a fantastic job with the Yu-Gi-Oh! R retrains. I mean, first of all, Yu-Gi-Oh! R, for those of you that don't know, it's a manga that had to do with Pegasus's brother. What was it? His adopted brother, Yako Tenma. And that's where you get, you know, the three wicked avatars, you know, the wicked Dreadroot, the wicked Dead Scythe, and then the big black blob, as we like to call it, the wicked avatar itself. But but Motor Kaiser appeared in R34 out here. Uh, and just kind of looking back at this, yeah, that, that pretty much looks like him. <laughs> Not going to lie. I am very curious to know, you know, what this card can actually do, considering the fact that it's literally an engine card. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I don't know, man. When you, when you look at these sorts of things, you definitely look at them and you go, huh. Now, also in the Motor archetype out here, I, I didn't tell you about this one. But there is something called two-for-one repair. Now, I'm assuming that we are going to get two-for-one repair out here. Yeah, two-for-one two for repair job. Special summon a motor monster from your graveyard to your side of the field. After that, any remaining motor monsters in your graveyard are removed from play. What a card, man. The fact that it's just, hey, this is a monster reborn for your motor monster. <laughs> I I can't imagine a world out here. Um, motor, why why this is yeah this was used by Keith Howard in the manga. All right, Yu-Gi-Oh R in its engine tokens in the TCG. Wow, these tokens are 200 attack, 200 defense. 
All right, and then of course, a Fiendish Engine Omega is able to make these. Uh, we actually have Fiendish Engine Omega support if this actually works out. Uh, motor Shell, oh wow, we actually have enough almost for, and then the Motor Frenzy also has the ability to make these. Wow, you have a lot of options to make motor tokens out here for this, but the fact that you're finally getting support for the motor archetype, I, I think that's actually a pretty big W out here, whether or not you choose to see it that way. So uh, we also have, evidently, the Firebird of Burning Skywing. Um, uh, this is a, okay, first of all, I'm not surprised to see a pyro fusion monster coming out of this. Um, and I'm assuming because this had no effect listed in the show, we're probably going to get something stupidly broken out of this thing. Um, this was used by Gregor out here. Is the Eddie counterpart, blah, blah, blah. Um, Blaze Phoenix, Blaze Bombard. Oh, God, here we go again. How many times is it that we're going to sit here and we're going to go through the Blaze Bombard Phoenix stuff and we're going to continue to give this deck power-ups? Because you already know this is a Power Fusion monster. You know there's going to be something ridiculous at the end of the sugar-coated rainbow for this stupid thing out here. All right, like, I don't know. I <laughs> Probably going to be... I wonder, since it is a Pyrofusion, um, and it is Firebird, the Burning Skywing, I don't see anything machine on this, do you? Yeah, I don't see a single thing, uh, maybe the wings might be, those wings resemble more of like Gallus of Starbeast than anything out here. So maybe, just maybe, we're going to get something pretty interestingly strong about this. But, ugh. now, so back to um, dear old what I, I think is Hope Woven and um, its counterpart down here. So I gotta bring up Number S Monsters. So Number S, short for Shining Numbers, is a sub archetype for both numbers and shining archetypes. They're evolved forms of the base numbers, which are summoned by overlaying their base counterparts through Shining Xyz evolution. This was used by Yuma in the Zexel 5Ds. They are also the manga counterparts of the number C archetype as they use Shining Xyz evolution as opposed to Chaos evolution. So the list of number S monsters that technically do exist already um, do exist here as these. Now, there is a wiki article or somewhere along the way that was mentioning um, number 30, or our, our 37 and our 38 that underwent the shining number process in the manga. And they did not technically have anything noted about their effects. So dear old uh, hope woven dragon spider shark from the uh man this is can't be destroyed by battle except by a number monster during either player's turn detach and material from this card all monster your opponent currently controls and there's a thousand tech to the end phase or, or yeah, during the end phase of this card is engraved because it was destroyed and sent during special symbol summoning as many monsters from your graveyard as possible that were destroyed this turn except this card and if the total attack of all monster opponent controls is at least double the total attack of monster control, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. If summon this way, target a number of monsters in your graveyard and special summon this card is actually um, pretty gosh darn good. All right, <laughs> at least I always love the the requirement up here for this. And then our counterpart number uh, thirty eight, Hope Bringer titanic dragon of darkness of brokenness same thing can be short by bow during either place your opponent activates a spell or effect negate that banish that spell if this card is banished by this effect uh or yeah if the card that was banished by this effect uh is special summon attach that spell banished to this card as an exceed material when your opponent's monster declares an attack detach one material change attack target to this yeah this is standard exactly what we're dealing with here and then this card gains attack equal to destroy monster original attack when this card is destroying target and exceed monster you control it gains attack equal to the attack this card had on the field um i wonder if um what these two will actually do for their shining form upgrades um it's just one of those interesting little things that you look at and you're like huh but um, I'm assuming that's what these are. Um, I, the whole number S thing was very interesting. Uh, I should have known that, actually. I read the manga, and I've totally forgotten all about it. But this is what we're dealing with right now. Very, very interesting stuff. So please, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I will see your beautiful faces back here in day, guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you.
Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.